your YouTube. Uh, here is my Gundam Eclipse Summer War Contest 2011 entry, and it is going to be based on the uh, Crossbone Gundam X1 SD. Here it is, my Crossbone X3 conversion. Okay, um, here is the kit in a nutshell, and quite happy with it. Uh, the way it came out, uh, most of it is hand brushed. All the blues are. Um, a lot of the white is actually spray painted. After, of course, a spray can um, primer. And the reason why I use spray principle is because first it's a lot of surface and second because when I was using the enamels and on the shoulders you can actually see that's actually hand brushed enamel. Uh, the white out of all the colors would start eating away at the primer and if there were any colors on top it will also start absorbing it. It was very difficult to work with so I, I decided to just uh, go for the spray painting the uh, white. Everything else is hand brushed. Um, also did some lining on it too. As far as the paint goes, uh, I decided to go for a more simple um, look to it. As far as lining, just minimize on the use of it. Uh, if you look on the um, poster that it comes with the manual, um, this is all lined. A lot of it is lined. It's lined everywhere and I, wa I didn't want to do that so I just try to keep it as, mi as minimum uh, I know there is a red stripe going on the forehead right here but what happens is if I do that then I can't take off this mask to check on the LED um, right now it's a green LED and after a while you know if I wanted to uh, I could change it into a different color so that's why I decided to not go that way uh, as far as the details, there's a lot of flaws to the kit. Uh, as far as my paint job, uh, a lot of um, thick paint layers here and there. Um, but overall, thanks to the top coat that I used, it's a flat top coat that I used, uh, it came out. I, I guess it helps hide the, uh, a lot of the flaws. Okay, so the one thing that you are probably interested in seeing, the biggest change uh, that you may notice is that I included, I uh, installed this um, beam palmer kit. And what this pretty much is, is a solar robot. And what it does is it stores, you know, the sunlight comes in, it stores it, and during the night it comes out. Um, did I want it to be this bulky out? As you can see, it's huge. Uh, not really. Um, what I really wanted to do was have these electronic components and everything installed in the body, and maybe have you know the batteries or capacitors coming out from the back. But due to my limited electronic electronics knowledge, uh, I couldn't do that. I just had to go for the standard. Um, kit and that's why it ended up being this way mm, I am happy with it I mean it's two types of hobbies that I've always been into especially this one um, it's actually I go much more back with it but I kind of stopped doing it and you know uh, came back to it because of this kit so now let me show you how it works Okay, so let's assume um, for practical purposes these batteries are the sunlight, you know, charging through the back. And hopefully I won't unplug it. And it's going to charge throughout the whole day. And when the light is off, it turns on. Um, like I said, it all depends on how well this... Um, kit charges the sunlight how strong the sun is the stronger the sun is um, this flash right there um, 
is much more intense. It actually can last up to two seconds and then it fades away slowly. Uh, right now because of the lighting you can probably see the uh, second phase which is after the bright flash is a dimming light. Turns off then turns on back on. Okay so on to a couple more details of this kit. I forgot to mention I did flat plate the feet. Um, it did look very hollow without it. I also um, filled the uh, gaps on the arms. And the thing with this is that um, I really suck at flat plating. This is definitely, you know, not a very good job at it. I did, I did try and look into the manga to get the uh, pattern. But uh, yeah, working with these small pieces, um, I had my pieces fly all over the place. So I, ha I ended up having to use some uneven ones. Also, I have here a Murasama blaster. Um, I know I was said I was gonna do from scratch, but this one is uh, not. This one, this piece right here, comes from the um, beam sword that, that the um, SZ Cross one comes with, and it's shaped in a, like a um, pirate sword. And so what I did was modify that instead. It's only detail on the front, the back is pretty hollow, and actually, well, as you can see, I'm using blue tack. Um, and you know, just to add more volume, but by itself, it doesn't look too bad either. I would have to clean that up if I wanted to use it like this. Okay, and also one more thing. Uh, here is the uh, beam rifle, um, Sam Buster, I think is the name, and I included a magnet piece. Yep, I decided not to paint it because I just wanted to keep it that way. I just wanted to show that out. And uh, there is a magnet I installed here, and this is the first time I'm trying this. And there you go. It's quite nice. I just painted this, I just put the glue, so I'm kind of nervous about that. But there it is. It looks pretty sweet. And here it is. Um, the last accessory is the uh, beam shield cloth. Um, made from actually an old uh, pair of underwear that I had. It's okay, it was clean, I think. Um, and the reason why I used it is because it has this pattern on it. And the outside is spray painted. And I'm really happy with the results. It makes it look pretty badass. I uh, have to play around with it a little bit to make it sit good. But, um, you know, uh, it looks great. Had to make a little cut extra. And I used this uh, bobby pin to hold it together. And yeah, that's just pretty much how I hold it. And then I usually um, display with the Murasama blaster. So this is how it usually looks. Okay, so this is it and um, thank you all for watching thanks f uh, thanks to Gundam Eclipse for holding this contest and good luck to all the other contestants um, there are some amazing entries out there and you know I'm really eager to see what they uh, what they've done with their kids so yeah until next time gimmick I forgot to mention is the cockpit opens and there it is um, I did not paint it uh, it's actually just in the primer and well I wanted to paint it but um, usually for the cockpit window is um, light blue and because everything else is light blue didn't make much sense, uh, so I just keep it this way. 
also the other thing I had to do uh, for this thing is I also had to add a little bit of an elevation to it as you can see here this was all done with um, green potty you know the kind of potty that dries out 